Hello everyone, welcome to CS for All. Today we are going to talk about analysis of nested loops. Now you might be thinking, what is this guy talking about? Don't we know how to analyze codes? Don't we know that if there are two for loops nested, they will conclude to a big O of n square solution? Don't we know that if there are three for loops nested, they will conclude to a big O of n cube solution? Don't we know that if there is a single for loop that will conclude to a big O of n solution? This code right here, you might be thinking that it is a big O of n square solution because it has two nested for loops. But no, my friend, it is not a big O of n square solution. We will be considering this example in this video. So if you want to know how to actually analyze codes, watch the video until the very end. Let's roll the intro. Hi again. So first of all, we will be doing theoretical analysis with this particular code. So this particular code follows this pattern over here and there is one outer for loop and one inner for loop. The outer for loop is running from a value of i equals to zero. And it is running up to a value n minus 1 and i is incrementing by a value of 1 at every step. And there is an inner for loop where the value of j is starting from i plus 1. The value of j will end when it becomes n minus 1 and it is also incrementing by a value of 1. So we have to find time as a function of n that is the input data so now we need to figure out how many times this outer for loop and this inner for loop is running and we can also see that there is some constant work and we can conclude this as k here okay now let's see for how many times the outer for loop is running and the inner for loop is running so for the outer for loop i will be writing out here and for the inner for loop i will be writing in here so now if the value of i is 0, right, if the value of i is 0, how many times will the inner for loop run? So j will start from i plus 1, that is 0 plus 1, that is 1, and it will end up to n minus 1. So it will run for n minus 1 times. If value of i is 1, the j will run up to n minus 2 times. If the value of i is 2, the j will run up to n minus 3 times. Now let's continue it. If the value of i is n minus 1, the inner for loop will run up to 0 times. So now if we want to calculate the total time taken, so total time let's say it is t and then there is a constant for k, so let's write a k here and then we will be summing up all this works here. Okay, so that would be n minus 1 plus n minus 2 plus n minus 3 plus let's give it a dot and then a 1 plus a 0. So basically this is a summation of n right. There's a summation of n this entire expression there's a summation of n. So what can we write a summation of n? We can write this as k into n into n plus 1 by a 2 right so this is the summation of n right so this is the summation of n so what can we conclude from here so what can we conclude from here so this expression this expression will lead to k into n by 2 plus k into n square by 2 right so in the previous video we talked about how we should eliminate the constants so what are the constants here the constants are k and 2 right so the constants are k and 2 so let's eliminate them and now we will be only considering the value of n that is a power of n. So there are two powers of n that is n and n square. So we will be considering only the highest power of n. So the highest power of n is n square, right? So this will 
conclude to a big O of n square code. So this is our second example. This is a very same code which I showed you during the first quarter of our video. So in this code, there are two variables n and k. For now, let's assume k is always less than n. Okay. We will assume this for now. So now let's talk about the code structure here. The outer for loop, we can see i is running from a value of 0 up to a value of n minus 1. And the incrementation, it is a bit different here. Here i will increment by a value of i plus j. And the inner for loop, it is starting from a value of i plus 1 that is j starting with a value of i plus 1 j will end when its value becomes k and j is incrementing by a value of 1 here. So currently we cannot figure out how many times this outer for loop is running because i is incrementing by a value of i plus j where j is also a variable and if we look carefully when this inner for loop will end, the value of j will be equal to k right here. And if the value of j after this entire inner for loop gets finished is k, then I can replace this j with a k. So whenever the i is getting incremented, it is incrementing by a value of k. So now if I want to know how many times this outer for loop is running, let's assume n as uh, let's say it is 30 here and let's say k is a value of 3 here. Okay, so if my outer for loop is starting from 0 and n is 30 here, so every time i is incrementing, it will increment by a value of k, which is 3. So first incrementation will be here, that is 3. Then second incrementation will be here, that is 6. Then third incrementation will be here, that is 9 and so on. Okay. So if I want to know how many times the outer for loop is running, it will be effectively n by k times, right? Now let's see how many times the inner loop runs. So if i is 0, then j will start from 1 and it will end up at k, right? So at worst case, this inner for loop will run for k times. So this will conclude to n by k into k as my total time. So this k and this k will cancel each other and this will conclude to a big O of n solution. So this was not a big O of n square solution even though there were two nested for loops. I hope you learned something new from this video and have a better understanding of how to analyze nested loops. So if you really enjoyed the video, please consider liking the video, subscribing to the channel and share it with your friends. And if you have any doubts or queries, you can comment down below or you can connect directly with us through LinkedIn or our Telegram channel. So see you guys in the very next video. Till then, stay happy, stay healthy. Bye. It's my life. It's now or never. But I ain't gonna...